Hi, and welcome to this short course that I'm going to give about dissemination, outreach and research communication at this year's Bergen Summer Research School. My name is Kiki Kleiven. I'm an associate professor here at the University of Bergen and I'm in the field of marine geology. So I, my research is about ocean currents and climate on our planet. And I specifically care about how the ocean currents have changed when climate has been warmer and colder than today, natural climate change. I spend a lot of my time naturally teaching and supervising, but I also spend a lot of the time in the laboratory in front of the microscope. And when I did material for my research, I go out to sea on marine expeditions to the world's oceans, but I care about the ocean floor or what I can find at the ocean floor. Because I collect samples, actually long sediments cores that I push into the ocean floor, these are archives of past climate change. And I can find out with great detail how much the ocean currents on the planet have changed. Actually, I wanted to tell you a little story about ocean currents. And to do that, I need this guy. I picked with me this little rubber duck from the bathroom this morning because the rubber duck is telling us an interesting story that happened. We have to go back to 1992. There was a ship that took off from Hong Kong. It was going to the US and was filled with containers. The ship hit a storm and one of the containers tilted and fell out in the Pacific Ocean and opened. It was filled with 29,000 yellow rubber ducks that started floating around in the vast Pacific Ocean. About half of these rubber ducks went south. They started showing up on the beaches of Chile and Peru, or they made it all the way around the Pacific Ocean and started washing up on the east coast of Australia. The other half of the rubber duck decided to float north. They went to the Bering Strait, where they floated into the Arctic Ocean. They froze into the ice and was transported over the Arctic Ocean and started melting out along the east coast of Greenland. And over 10 years after the incident in the Pacific, these little yellow rubber ducks started showing up on the east coast of the US and on the coasts and beaches around the British islands. Can you imagine how little our planet is when we think about ocean currents? How we are connected with these enormous transport bonds, these conveyors? In real life, they transport nutrients, oxygen around the planet but they also transport rubber ducks or garbage that we put into the ocean. But it's not only the ocean that we share on our planet. Think about the enormous, vast atmosphere that's around the planet. I always think about that as an ocean of air. And wherever we are on the planet, and if we are emitting climate gases, they go into the atmosphere, they remain there for a long time, and we all share the effect of it. In this year's Bergen Summer Research School, the focus is on a lot of issues that are related to, to sustainability and climate. One of them is to also create more smarter cities where we can live and don't emit so much and adapt also to the change in climate. This is extremely important. But let's go back to the ocean currents a little bit. Do you know that um, Norway has its very own ocean current? If you've been with me in Bergen, which I really wish you could have been, you would have seen how nice and green it is so far north on our planet. Norway is in the same latitude as Greenland, but yet it's got a distinct warm spring and summer, beautiful seasons. That's because we have a warm ocean currents that float along our coast. We call it the Gulf Stream because the ocean current starts in the Gulf of Mexico, where it's warm and it's been transported across the Atlantic Ocean and gives up warm air and warm water along the coast of Norway, making this kind of like a green little lagoon, very, very unique place to be. In my research, I found out that 8,200 years ago, this ocean current stopped and it got a lot colder. That was at the end of the last big ice age on the planet. So it was ice and melting ice that made the ocean currents melt. But because it was an exciting research, it made it all the way into the journal Science and created a lot of headlines around the globe. Ancient chill stopped the ocean currents and it got colder. I woke up to a lot of these headlines and I had the pleasure of working with many journalists to try to popularize and make my research into a good story for the general public. Well, I also woke up to some headlines saying that Norway is going to have a new ice age. And my brother called me and said, what on earth have you been up to with your research today? 
But overall, the experience of working with journalists and getting my research out and popularized, that really made it very important to me to continue with dissemination and outreach. I was engaged by the Ministry of Environment and Climate in Norway to do a full school tour to teaching colleges, but also to high school teachers in Norway, where we gave a full day climate lecture. I, as an ocean scientist, uh, together with an expert in weather and atmosphere, and also together with a polar researcher who'd been to the Arctic and seen with his very own eyes the large and huge changes that are occurring due to climate change. So we traveled around for a year, lecturing all over Norway. And later on, this course, which was called Climate Klok, Climate Wise, transitioned into Generation Green, that for over 10 years have been involved in dissemination and outreach to high school kids and teachers all over Norway. For over 20 years now, I've been engaged in outreach, and I've been working with very many stakeholders around the world. Um, I also do a lot of interviews on TV and in media. In this class that I'm going to give to you, you're going to get some lectures, but we're also going to meet in Zoom and have some discussion about outreach. Because I think when we work at the University of Bergen and we work at universities all over the Norway, all over Norway and in the world, like you are going to do, I see there's a three partition of how we are as researcher. One third is devoted to research of our time. One third of our time is devoted to teaching and supervising our students. But one third should also be devoted to giving back to the society, telling the world about how incredibly important research is so that people have the right knowledge to make the right decisions. It's really part of who we are and it should be part of what we do. So I hope to see you online in the Zoom class. I hope you have some good questions for me and are curious about some of the things that are dealing with outreach and communication. Look forward to see you there.